Hi folks, so in prior videos I've summarized the construction and deployment of a solar-powered Arduino-based data logger coupled with the BMP280 temperature pressure sensor. The original unit was developed and deployed as a backup to a formal weather station on the Audubon Research Ranch. That station can sometimes go down, which can be problematic since continuous atmospheric, atmospheric pressure data is needed to correct water level transducer data collected at a nearby wetland in the Canelo Hills. By having this backup installed, we can ensure we don't lose water level data should the formal weather station fail. In this video, I'll summarize data logger upgrades, performance metrics, and lessons learned. For those who want me to just cut to the chase, here's a quick summary. An upgraded data logger was constructed using an Adafruit Feather 32U4 data logger I also replaced the BMP280 in the original installation with the BME280 weather sensor, which gives me added humidity monitoring capabilities. And I also upgraded the original RTC, or real-time clock, with the DS3231 for better precision timestamping. Data is written to an 8 gig Class 10 unbranded SD card and is programmed to collect one record every 15 minutes. The data logger and sensor runs off a LiPo battery that has its voltage topped off by an Adafruit solar LiPo charger coupled with a Voltaic System 6 watt solar panel. The unit collected over 4,600 records over the course of 52 days starting on September 11th, 2022. The data logger ceased to function on October 30th. Upon resetting the board, the unit picked up where it left off without any issues. The reason for the system locking up in October is unclear to me at this time. A simple remedy is to reset the unit during routine field visits to clear out any memory or hardware issues that may be contributing to the system locking up. In fact, this happens automatically when the system is visited for retrieving data, but perhaps should happen on a more frequent cadence. The atmospheric data collected by the BME280 is reasonable when compared to a formal weather station located on the Audubon Research Ranch just a few miles away, but I learned the BME280 collects station pressure and must be corrected to sea level pressure if its data is to be checked against a formal weather station. This video summarizes additional recommendations and lessons learned for the code shared in prior videos. All right, folks, it's September 11th, 940, so this has been installed for a couple months now. Just, I'm going to remove this unit because I'm not happy with that um, real-time clock and the sensor I don't think is working right. So I've gone ahead and I've soldered up and uh, prepared a new one with a better clock and a better sensor. This has got a BME280 and then I can't remember the model number on the, on the precision timer. I'll, I'll add that later to the notes. Okay, so the upgraded data logger has been installed. I'm going to go ahead and hit reset on this. We're going to wait a second and make sure that light comes on for five seconds because that'll tell me that the first record has been written to the data logger. That's just something I wrote in code. It said when you're writing data, go ahead and turn that LED on. So I'm just going to wait. There it is. And we're done. She's set up. Saturday, April 22nd, and I'm out here and revisiting uh, this little solar-powered barometric pressure instrument to see how it's doing. I see a light that's on, so that looks promising. So we're going to go ahead and open this box up and take a look at the data. And I'm happy to see that it doesn't look like anything's been chewing on any cables. Got a few spider webs, no big deal. See the little BME 280s right there. So that's what's been collecting data. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the SD card. There it is. All right, folks, moment of truth. Plugged into the computer. There's the data file. Let's see what we got. Let's widen this up. This is looking good. Oh man, not bad. Through October. Oh, 
October 27th is when it bombed and I have no idea why. It looks like it went ahead and it reset. The voltage was good, so I'm not sure why it would have reset. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what happened or what caused this to, uh, to go down the way it did. So we'll have to do a little exploring. Okay, the SD card is reinserted. It's 105. I just went ahead and I clicked on the reset button. You can see the, uh, the program is restarting by that little red light. And that red light means that it's writing data. And it's done. So we're gonna let this continue collecting data and I'm gonna try to do a little debugging at home. In reviewing the data for clues, you can see I was getting these repeated header rows, but these only occurred at the beginning of the data set, likely due to me experimenting with different delays for recording data prior to deployment and then uploading revised code for the same. However, what I do see is that the time is always resetting to compile time rather than actual time. This is due to the fact that at line 83 in my code, I forgot to comment out this line that resets the real-time clock to compile time. So every time the board is reset, the time is reset to compile time accordingly. So that was the first lesson learned and it's something pretty easy to fix. I just need to comment out line 83 so that every time after I reset the, uh, the ADA logger, the, uh, the record will be time stamped with the actual time recorded by the real-time clock. That's not a problem though, since uh, I was fortunate to have recorded the time that I started collecting data in the field and can thus calculate the difference and adjust my time records accordingly. Now for graphing, I'll start a little lower in the data set in order to ensure the BME280 is equilibrated to its new environment. And I'll also add a couple of extra columns to calculate pressure in inches of mercury and temperature in Fahrenheit using simple formulas that refer to the raw data. With this corrected and amended data set, I can now plot some graphs to see how the sensor did and see if there are any outliers indicative of other problems. In regards to battery voltage, you can see here that my voltage was consistently maintained above four volts, regardless of the data logger being installed in the shade of an oak tree. That's thanks to that oversized solar panel that I purchased for this particular installation. Temperature data looks reasonable as well, showing a diurnal pattern over the period of record with nothing out of the ordinary for this location in the high desert. Humidity similarly looks good, although I question the absolute validity of this data since I have some desiccant in the box, which likely biased the results of the sensor. And then the most important parameter for our purposes is inches of mercury needed to help us correct pressure transducer data collected from sensors in the adjacent wetland. I can see here I have a range uh, between 24.9 and about 25.3 inches of mercury. Given the importance of atmospheric pressure, I checked the formal station located at the Audubon Research Ranch, which is at approximately the same elevation nearby, and noticed the pressure there was significantly higher relative to what I was recording. Not being an expert in atmospheric pressure, this concerned me. I plotted the results for the Canelo Hills installation shown in blue here relative to the Audubon Research Ranch and observed a fairly consistent and significant gap between the two data sets. However, I also observed that the relative shape of the curves reflecting local dynamics mirrored one another. Initially, I thought that maybe I had damaged the sensor during soldering. I also wondered if the opening in the weatherproof box for feeding the cable from the solar panel was not sufficient for equilibrating pressure inside the box with outside conditions. Regarding that possibility, I do have a second experiment I'm running in my backyard where the same sensor is placed in an open PVC pipe with plenty of exposure to the atmosphere. I downloaded some data from that sensor and then compared it to another local weather station here in Tucson and observe that in that case, the formal station reports two atmospheric pressures. The first is station and the second for sea level. The sea level pressure was significantly higher and that's when it all made sense. Specifically, the BME 280 sensors reporting local or station atmospheric pressure, whereas most formal weather monitoring installations like the one at the Autobahn Ranch 
correct for atmospheric pressure at sea level. Because the column of air at sea level for a given location will be thicker, it stands to reason that atmospheric pressure will also be greater. And thus, the difference between your station pressure relative to sea level pressure will also increase. Both my Canelo Hills installation as well as the research ranch are located at an elevation of about 4,800 feet. So this explains why my station pressure is much lower than the pressure reported by the weather station at the ranch, which has obviously been corrected for sea level without explicitly saying so on the website. By taking three random days and calculating the difference between high and low values for those days, I can come up with a correction factor that should adjust station elevation for sea level, thus giving me a reading that makes more sense relative to the formal weather station. In this case, I should add 4.95 inches of mercury to my data collected by the BME 280. Upon adding that correction factor, I get something that more closely matches what is recorded by the weather station at the Audubon Research Ranch. This gives me more confidence in the atmospheric pressure records registered by the BME 280 and recorded by my data logger. This is positive, but I'm still not clear on why the system reset on October 30th after collecting close to 4,700 records while reporting an adequate battery voltage. Upon manually resetting the system, it had no issues picking up where it left off, although the data is obviously off due to the RTC resetting to compile time, which can be easily fixed in code. Until I can figure all this out, the easiest remedy may be to have the facility manager for the preserve occasionally hit the reset button on the data logger, similar to restarting a Windows machine that locks up occasionally. It's not ideal, but this is a proactive measure that can be easily addressed. If you have any ideas as to why things may have halted during data collection, please share in the comments of this video. As always, I'll make copies of my code and all my data available in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe for updates. Thanks.